top 10 signs that you might have a problem with your fertility. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. So I'm a fertility doctor and this channel exists so that you can learn about your health, hormones, fertility, and be a better advocate for your body. Couple really exciting updates before we jump in. And of course, always subscribe and share the channel that just helps spread our message to more people. Number one is going to be sign up for the newsletter. If you are not part of the newsletter community, it is where I give you exclusive access to updates, my favorite tips and tricks. I answer fertility questions and you'll get some recipes and you'll be able to stay involved and up to date in the community. You can reach the newsletter at nataliecrawfordmd.com slash newsletter. Also, the As A Woman podcast is releasing a new season, and I'm so excited to announce that it is going to be coming here to YouTube. So finally taking the podcast to video, we are bringing back guests, still answering your top questions, and I'm really, really excited about it. So if you already subscribe here, you will see the As A Woman podcast right here on this channel, and feel free to comment right on those videos so we can get topics, suggestions, and questions from you to record our next episodes. Also, I have a lot of updates coming with the book soon. If you do not know, The Fertility Formula is my debut book, which is going to be released in 2026. And if you sign up for the newsletter, you are going to get some exclusive access and I'm gonna be posting some behind the scenes here as well. So definitely stay tuned and just huge thanks because you guys have made this all possible. Well, today we're talking about 10 signs that you might have a problem with your fertility. And I will be honest, one of the things I like is to see people earlier in the journey, but all the time I am told I didn't really know that was a problem or I thought that was normal. That's how it's always been for me. Or my least favorite, I got dismissed at my doctor because we all know when maybe you bring something up and it gets dismissed how that makes you feel. Because we all know when you have a problem and you bring it up and it gets dismissed, that just makes you feel really, really crummy. And that's one of my least favorite things that I know so many people have experienced, especially when it comes to talking about your body or your period or your fertility. So let's dive into these really quickly so we can go over 10 things that I want you to be aware about, whether you are trying to get pregnant right now, or maybe you want to be pregnant in the future. Number one is going to be irregular periods. So if your period is irregular, then that could be a problem. And you may be shocked to realize, you know, almost as many as 20% of people will say that their period is normal and regular. And then when we go and we look at apps or we look at their tracking data, we can see that it actually is not. And this used to be the case all the time when I was really starting out and somebody would pull out their calendar because it was before apps when I was first out of training and you would see somebody cycle marked and they would feel like it's regular, but when you really start looking at it, it is not. So skipping months is not normal or having a period that is not regular and predictable. So if you just say it comes sometime this month, that's not accurate. It really should be within a couple of days of expected. My litmus test is if I give you a calendar, you should be able to put your finger and be like one day off in either direction. You should be very close to when you think that period is coming to be a regular cycle. There's a lot of variation when it comes to irregular cycles, but definitely tracking your cycle is going to be the key to this. So whether it is as simple as marking your day number one, the first day of full flow in your calendar, or you're using a cycle tracking app, knowing when your period is coming is the first step. There's a lot more we can do with cycle tracking, but just how regular is your cycles, number one. Number two is going to be very painful periods. And this one is one of those things that we just convince ourselves that this is normal. So very painful periods can be a sign of endometriosis, adenomyosis, uterine fibroids, and all of these can impact your fertility. They have pain from inflammation. And the way I like to think about this here is that your period should not prevent you from your normal life. So if you had dinner plans at your favorite restaurant, would you cancel them? Would you call in sick to work or school? Or would you call in sick when you were an adolescent? That's actually a really high sign of having endometriosis is if you would miss school when you were younger. Number three is going to be having no period at all. I hear from women all the time, well, nobody really wants to have a period, so I wasn't that worried about it. But your period is a vital sign. It's a sign of your hormonal health. So not having a period is not normal, asterisk exception. If you're on birth control, hormonal birth control that is preventing ovulation, it might also prevent you from having a period. And in those circumstances, that could be normal. 
or you're using contraception like a progesterone IUD, then it can be normal not to have a period. But if you are not on hormonal contraception, you should definitely be having a period. So amenorrhea can be a sign either of your whole body's interpretation of your health. It can come from the brain. It can come from the ovaries. But that is absolutely something that needs to be evaluated. Number four is going to be shorter long cycles, especially if they are a change from what your normal is. So you might tell me my cycle is regular and it's coming every month, but if it is shorter or longer than what we think it should be, those could be certain signs. So typically we say the average range should be about 21 to 35 days. I'll say most cycles are going to be between about 24 to 34 days. But if your cycle is really getting short, especially if it's shorter than it used to be, that is one of the first signs that we get that your egg count might be getting lower because as you have fewer eggs, you're going to have a quicker response to ovulation because the brain doesn't know you have fewer eggs. It sends out its normal signal of FSH, but because there's fewer eggs there, one starts growing faster, ovulating sooner and shortening your cycle. Similarly, really long cycles can be a sign of delayed ovulation like PCOS. When you have a lot of eggs, that FSH signal from the brain might get diluted amongst the eggs and it takes them longer to get one to grow. So both short or long cycles can be abnormal. And I'm going to add in here short luteal phase. So if you are tracking your cycles and you know the difference in the follicular and the luteal phase, Follicular phase comes before you ovulate, luteal phase comes after you ovulate, and I have lots of videos on that and understanding just your cycle in general. But the luteal phase is a representation of when your body is making progesterone from the corpus luteum. And if that is short, you then can have another slew of problems. I always say that's the first stage of ovulation abnormality for me. Perfectly regular cycles, short luteal phase, long cycles, skipping cycles, no cycle at all. So that short luteal phase can be the first sign that something's abnormal, even if your period is regular. And we see this with things like thyroid abnormalities, high prolactin levels, and generalized hypothalamic dysfunction or chronic stress or inflammation can contribute to a change in your cycle pattern. Number five is going to be very heavy or very light bleeding. So your bleeding should be a pretty consistent flow. You should have decent bleeding for one to three days, and then you might have some spotting, but you shouldn't have a lot of spotting beforehand or a lot of spotting after, but it shouldn't be spotting the whole time. So if your bleeding is very, very light, this could be a sign for us that you're not growing a thick enough lining or that you have scar tissue or some other problem inside the uterine cavity, making it harder for a lining to grow. On the other hand, very heavy periods, you should not bleed through your clothes. If you bleed through your clothes, that's not normal. It could be a sign of uterine fibroids, endometrial polyps, cervical or uterine cancer. And so anytime that you're having bleeding that's that's heavy, you want to get that evaluated immediately, even if you're not trying to get pregnant or you don't care about getting pregnant. Number six is going to be a big change in your weight, whether it's weight loss or weight gain. You should be a relatively consistent weight. And of course, if you're trying to lose weight, that's different. Things that can cause weight loss can include things like, you know, chronic illness, sometimes autoimmune disease or thyroid disease, things that can cause you to gain weight can also be thyroid disease, PCOS. So you really want to know if your weight has changed from what it should have been. Could that be a sign something is going on? Number seven is going to be high signs of androgens. So androgens are male hormones like testosterone. Your adrenal glands actually make androgens as well. But these can cause hair growth, especially like a mustache-like hair or hair on your chin. It can cause hormonal acne, so that acne on your face. And you can actually have hair loss too, like that temporal balding, like male pattern baldness. These can all be signs that your androgens are higher. This can be a sign of PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Also could be a sign of an adrenal problem. One of the most common is called congenital adrenal hyperplasia. And I like to say it masquerades as PCOS a lot, but does have a different treatment. It's an enzyme disorder in your adrenal glands where your androgen starts to back up. And then there's also things that are more rare, like ovarian and adrenal gland tumors, that if you say, oh my gosh, I now have a ton of facial hair that I never had before, or this acne is just way worse than it used to be, we want to get that evaluated. Number eight is going to be if you already have a diagnosis of something that's going to impact your infertility. And this often happens when you're younger and you're not aware that it could play a role. And so top things here are going to be a diagnosis of endometriosis, hypothyroidism, PCOS, uterine fibroids. These are things that women get told and then not explained. They don't get told what to do about it, when to seek an evaluation. And it drives me crazy because I will see somebody who got a diagnosis of PCOS, 
has totally abnormal periods, but was told to try for a year before she went to a fertility doctor when we should have intervened a year ago. So if you know you have something that could put you at risk for infertility, get fertility testing early. Talk to your OBGYN or a fertility doctor so that you know the whole picture to be prepared. Number nine is going to be a history of chlamydia or other sexually transmitted infection. This can cause fallopian tube damage. So chlamydial infection is one of the top causes of having blocked fallopian tubes. So if you've had this in your past, always bring it up to your doctor and you could consider getting a tubal evaluation done when you're ready to get pregnant to see if those fallopian tubes are open. And then number 10 is going to be trying to get pregnant for six months without success. Even though if you're under age 35, the definition of infertility is trying for a year without a success, over 70% of couples will get pregnant in those first six months who are going to. So when you're into that backhand of the six months, you're already starting to fall in the lower odds of success group and higher probability that something could be wrong with your fertility. This is where I absolutely recommend that you go in and you see a fertility doctor. You can get testing done early if you want to, but you absolutely should get testing if you've been trying for six months and you're 35 and older or one year max if you are under age 35. We do a fertility evaluation. We're going to get a good medical history, talk about your periods and your cycle tracking, about if you've been trying to get pregnant, what that's looked like. We're going to evaluate your ovaries, check your egg count, see if your uterus and tubes are normal, and do a semen analysis. And that is going to help us understand the basic building blocks of your fertility. So hope you learned a little bit about these top 10 things that could represent something could be wrong with your fertility. And these are all cases where I recommend going to see somebody earlier. You do not have to wait for a referral to see a fertility doctor. You do not have to try to get pregnant for 12 months before you see somebody or bring this up because you are the only person who really can advocate for your own health. Your fertility is a sign of your health, but you owe it to yourself to have all the data you need to make decisions. So thank you so much, friends, for all your support and for following the channel. Go ahead and ask any questions in the comments so we can make content that you still want. And stay tuned because next week you are going to see the very first episode of the new season of the As A Woman podcast. So join the 5 million others who have loved the podcast. If you've never listened to it, you were going to love it. Thank you, friends.